Hey y'all, welcome to Massive Beers, Massive Beer Reviews. This is what we're going to do today. We're going to review some beer because we do that from time to time. I'm Matt, and I'm here to talk about this beer. Fox Farm, this is Patch. I have not reviewed this beer, but I've had this beer several times. Why haven't I reviewed it? Because the last time... Uh, I got a batch of this, or the only time I got a batch of this was uh, when our boy Steven from the Connecticut Way, Beer Tuber Supporter Supreme, um, came down for Beer Tube Blues. He actually said, Hey man, I'm stopping at Fox Farm. If you want to put the order together, I can pick it up for you. I got this. I drank them all because I didn't want to review anything because they were that tasty. So there you go. We'll see this where this one comes up. Because it's got to be a different batch, obviously. This is canned on 309. It is 325. Um, patch American Pale Ale. Um, this is the old From the Soils Come the Spoils Fox Farm Jam. Uh, <clears throat> Connecticut, USA. 5.2% alcohol by volume. Uh, label wise, I've always dug. They do this kind of like eh, cross kind of thing with their labeling. It's always been a kind of just one of my favorite labels in the game so we'll see what's what um like i said the first time i got this it wasn't so much that i didn't want to review it is that it basically i got it at beer to palooza and for those that know um when you, somehow magically um beer to palooza is like a magical vortex a la the bermuda triangle that somehow a bunch of people get together uh, a bunch of beer tubers um viewers friends whatnot get together we all bring a bunch of beer we drink a ton of it, and then somehow we all leave with more than we came with. I don't know how that's possible. Um, just magically, this stuff happens. So basically, I had so much beer, I'm like, just, I, I was beholden to review the stuff that I purchased myself. So that's why I didn't review it. So, like I said, label-wise, I dig it. Patch, 5.2%. Fox Farm, one of my favorite breweries going, period. <clears throat> as far as that beer looks, I mean, just looks like this nice, soft kind of haze. I'm not sure if you could pick it up on camera, but you can see, you know, you can get a look get a little light through there it's a little semi opaque kind of thing going on so it's not the biggest most turbid thing in the history of mankind but it definitely has that rich kind of uh what you'd want from a nice low abv hazy pale index finger maybe even a nice kind of already developing a bit of a lacing um kind of top to it just barely off white kind of pillowy top to it the nose nose it's running the gamut here um from your sweet tropical fruits all the way to your citrus. Probably say it leans a little bit more heavily in the tropical fruit than anything else. You do get that stone fruit in there and there's a nice kind of peachiness to it. And while the citrus is not overly pithy or rindy, it's a little bit more sweety. It's not like tang level sweet. <clears throat> it's nice, it's it's there, it's meaningful, it's purposeful, but it really is that kind of sweet star, you know, tropical fruit, your kind of kiwi, a little bit sweeter portion of the show kind of tropical fruit which is kind of cool if you think about it you're talking about 5.2 percent not a big abv beer you're not expecting to come off that aggressive leg so it's definitely hitting above its wave class at least on a nose but yeah bursting at the seams of fruit tropical leading way soft little greeny grassy thing kind of floating around in there let's dive in cheers all There's a nice bittering to it. <clears throat> that green kind of gives way to a little bit more ranky-danky. A touch of west, a bit of weed, um, but it's still really wrapped around that big, huge tropical fruit. Again, we're leaning a little bit more sweeter tropical fruit, overripe and kind of mango, but really more of that kind of kiwi star tropical fruit in there with that stone fruit and citrus kind of helping prop the beer up along the way. We're drinking way more like a 6% and change beer, if not 7, than 5.2. It's a beautiful mouthfeel. Finishes a little bit dry. It's a cool kind of back and forth between that because you get that that illusion of that big sweetness because those tropical fruits and especially specifically that kind of sweeter tropical fruits really just tricks your brain into thinking it's like a very sweet kind of juiciness. And then once you actually kind of finish and let it sit for a second, that bittering that's in there, that ranky-danky bittering that carries a decent half to it, nothing too big to overpower that sweet, fruity side of things, but in combination with that in the beer kind of finishing relatively dry, gives you this kind of cool kind of back and forth between this big bursting sweet fruitiness, this nice kind of um, pseudo-dry kind of finish. It's just this back and forth of fruitiness 
and bitterness kind of just akin to more of, again, like a regular IPA as opposed to just a small little itty bitty pale ale. <clears throat> and this is what I talk about. This is what I dream about. This is what I kind of, that, that hill I die on, that soapbox that I bang on, on from, is that, you know, the magic for me is that 5.2% beer drinking 6.87, not the seven, the seven and a half drinking more like five. I don't, I don't get that. You know what I mean? That process for me is just backwards. That's what most people like. So I'm not saying I'm correct. I'm correct for me, obviously, but it just, it just, it, it, it just seems a little bit, just a weird way to go. And this is where that perfect world of mine kind of coalesces and becomes just this beautiful, big, rich kind of IPA eking up towards a double, but more, you know, just pale ale as far as vibes go, as far as alcohol goes. I mean, not vibes, that bigger vibes, but smaller ABV level. This dude's happy. A very happy camper. Absolutely fantastic beer. Now I don't remember why I didn't review them because I just drank them so fast. Um, I, I want to say it. I remember this beer being pretty much like this. And, you know, Fox Farm. They're, like I said, one of the my favorite breweries. I was going to say one of the best breweries in the country right now. As far as I'm concerned, that's the case. And they are really, really consistent across the board. There's always going to be subtle variants uh, or even bigger variants sometimes, but they tend to be quite consistent, more specifically on the hazies. So it kind of makes sense of that in my brain. But, you know, if we're just kind of wrapping this up in a bow, we're just going to drop right into the kind of Mount Rushmore status. Is definitely, definitely, definitely up there with the Mount Rushmore on the mountain low ABV hazy, you know, sneak boxes of the world, the boats of the world, those beers, I think, have a special place in my heart, and this one, on round two, definitely, definitely foots the bill there, yeah, delicious stuff, so let's talk about it, Fox Farm, what are your experiences with Fox Farm, oh, I didn't even say anything yet, this comes via my buddy Corey, I almost forgot to mention that, sorry brother, um, he sent me off a box of Fox Farm, but um, let me know your experience, um, let me know if you've had this specific beer, the specific batch of this beer, um, like I said, this was from 309.22, like I said, the last time I know they did this was right around BeerTube Palooza, so you're talking about late August, I believe it was, late August or early September, um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you've had this, what your experiences are with Fox Farm. In general, across the board, your experience with all the beers. Because uh, one of the reasons why they're one of my favorite breweries going right now is because of their versati versatile awesomeness. You know, they're, they're making lagers, they're making hazies, they're making stouts, they're making mixed culture, they're making barley wine, all that stuff. So let me know your thoughts. Let's have that conversation go from there. So there you go. Thank you very much again, Corey, for sending this off. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. We'll see you next time. Cheers, y'all.